Hi, I'm Dan McClellan, your Chargers Wrap Reporter for CBSSports.com. This is the Chargers Preview Show, where every week I give you a little information going into each week's game. This is week 10 of the 2012 season, and the 4-4 four four Chargers are traveling to Tampa Bay to take on the Buccaneers, who are also 4-4. Four and four. The Buccaneers are not an elite team yet, but they are a young team that's on the rise, led by quarterback Josh Freeman and former Chargers wide receiver Vincent Jackson. Jackson signed with the Buccaneers this offseason for five years, $55,555,555. The all fives in the contract was to honor Freeman, who wears number five. And Jackson hasn't disappointed. He leads the Buccaneers with 710 receiving yards and six touchdowns. The scary thing about Jackson in this game is he has a habit of playing well when it serves his best personal interest to play well. You may remember back to 2010 when he had a big contract dispute with A.J. Smith. In his first full healthy game back after that dispute, he went off for three touchdowns against the 49ers on a Thursday night game. Jackson could very well do the same thing this week to kind of shove it in Smith's face for not signing him to a long-term deal here. The Chargers will also have to deal with rookie running back sensation Doug Martin, who went off against the Raiders last week for four touchdowns and 251 yards. Martin has combined rushing and receiving 794 combined yards over the last two weeks. That is the best two-week yardage performance since Walter Payton in 1977. The Chargers will also have to contend with wide receiver Mike Williams, who has 504 yards and 5 TBs. Compare that to the Chargers' best wide receiver, Malcolm Floyd, who has 509 receiving yards this season. So offensively, it looks like the Buccaneers can control this game. The good things for the Chargers' offense is the Buccaneers' defense is worst in the league uh, against the pass. However, the Chargers' offense has been restricted of late to prevent the turnovers ever since the Chargers blew a 24-point lead to the Broncos on Monday Night Football. In the last 10 quarters of play, the Chargers only have two touchdowns on offense. Last Thursday night against the Chiefs, the defense also scored two touchdowns, and they may need to do the same this week for the Chargers to win. Outside linebacker Antoine Barnes hasn't practiced at all this week and is listed as doubtful. Questionable are defensive end Corey Legion and left tackle Jared Gaither. I think these two players are a bigger concern because they haven't practiced on Thursday and Friday, and I think they're not going to play either. Uh, Legion has done very well uh, recently, has uh, nine combined tackles, solo and assists over the last two weeks, and passes uh, three passes defense. He's also been a critical part of the Chargers' run defense, which is ranked fourth in the league. And as I mentioned earlier, they're facing Martin this week. So that's going to be a big test. And if Legion isn't in there, the likelihood is that the defensive line may wear down as the game rolls on because they're used to rotating a bunch of players in and out there. And without Legion, there's less rotation. Therefore, they may become more tired and that will create opportunities for Martin. Now, as far as Gaither not playing, you know, Mike Harris has been, uh, I'd say, a mixed performance in his four previous starts. It's really important to pr uh, protect Rivers uh, this week because, as I said, the Buccaneers have the worst pass defense, uh, but Rivers has 10 interceptions. And ever since the Monday night game where they blew the 24-point lead, uh, Turner has intentionally made the offense less dynamic to prevent turnovers. And last week it was somewhat successful. Uh, Rivers did complete 18 of 20 passes uh, to become only the sixth quarterback in NFL history to complete 90% of his passes on 20 or more attempts in a game. However, he only averaged 12.22 yards per completion. So we're not talking about going down the field and stretching the field and really, get, oh, really opening it up for Matthews. This is concerning because Matthews, uh, it may struggle this week against the Buccaneers' top rush uh, defense. So it's going to be an interesting game to see how this all plays out. Record-wise, these two teams look fairly evenly matched. They're both 4-4. Four and four. But I think what we're seeing now is that the Buccaneers are a team that are on the rise. They're adding plays to their playbook each week. Their offense is getting more dynamic. The Chargers' offense has actually become 
less dynamic in recent weeks, and I think that's a big concern going into this week's game. It may have reached the point where the Buccaneers have actually evolved into a better team than the Chargers, as the Chargers have kind of fallen back to the pack over the last four or five weeks or so. In fact, over the last three seasons or so. I'm expecting the Buccaneers are going to win this game 31-20. to For all your latest Chargers information, please visit CBS Sports every single day. You can also follow me on Twitter at CBS Chargers and San Diego Sports. You can also hear me on the radio Sunday mornings on Extra Sports 1360, the home of the Chargers, from 9 to 10 a.m. Sports Squawk Sunday with Doug and Dan.